Namaste, Angel. This is going to be a client reading for a new client. I'm going to begin by um, checking to see if her divine masculine, of who she believes to be her divine masculine is. She said that she had believed it and she thought at least that he believed it as well, but they're in separation. The fact that they're in separation does not believe, does not mean that he no longer believes that he is um, in a divine partnership with this woman. Um, he may still believe it, but walked off as divine masculine tend to do. I mean, it's part of their path. Um, so we're going to check that just in case. She said that she is an Aries sun, Cancer rising and Scorpio moon. That's all I know about her. Um, she did not give me the masculine's astrology. Um, but I believe he may be not only an air sign, but specifically a Gemini. Um, because I, I first opened right up when I was shuffling the tarot cards to the three of air. In fact, that's unfortunately with what I'm going to begin. And then that opposite, the two of air, then the magician, which represents the sign of Gemini for me. Um, and, and for many traditionally in the tarot period. Um, oh, and then with the hashtag creepy deck, I started with Venus, you know, uh, ice queen. So, of course, that represents air signs as well. In any case, I'm going to begin, like I said, with the Tony Carmine Salerno Universal Love Oracle and the energy of relationship and opening to reflection, which guides us to relationship, guides us to um, look into the relationship we have with ourselves if we are having any sort of relationship issues with others. And reflection is sort of similar because it guides us to, you know, look at our past, look around at our present and what we've got going on and then look toward the future and some plans. So that can have to do with the relationship we have with ourselves as well. Reflection and blessings, always remembering to count them. That's how we keep the flow of abundance going. So we don't um, do it for that reason, but that's a benefit. Reflection and sorrow. So this would um, coincide perhaps with the three of air again, which with which I'm going to begin when I use the angel tarot, maybe some forgiveness or something unnecessary. And as I say that I glance over and recall that the with the romance deck, I am indeed beginning with forgiving and learning. So there may be some um, apologies and things in order here, explaining this sorrow and dreams. sorrow back to relationship on that note you know what regardless of which one ends up on top it's relationship again I was going to say I'll cut either way creativity um, this for me <laughs> represents air and water more specifically um, Aquarius and Pisces but it can be a potential Gemini and a, you know, cancer, what was it? Cancer rising and Scorpio moon person. It can be that. Um, but it represents Aquarius and Pisces for me because of all the water. This is definitely a water bearer. She's holding a vessel that with something spilling out of it uh, and standing in a pool of water. Um, also behind her is the moon, which represents the sign of Pisces in the tarot, but the moon rules cancer, the real moon, um, Earth's moon rules the sign of cancer. So that's another thing there. Um, of course, the fact that she's standing in water <laughs> is enough to represent water signs. But there's uh, like these translucent fish jumping out of here um, that represent Pisces for me. In any case, creativity is about what it sounds like. It's a, it's a card of like abundance and creating our own abundance, right? um, designing our lives, being willing participants and active um, in coming up with customize ways that we can help to create abundance for ourselves. And the overall energy is inner child, which also um, tends to represent not only air signs, but specifically Aquarius for me. It could be either one, however. Um, and the reason it does is because of these 
well, first of all, all this air <laughs> that's behind here, all these puffs of smoke and air. Um, but then this child with the three stars, it's a star represents the sign of Aquarius in the tarot. But on top of that, where the stars are located, right? They're very specific areas and they're all the communication areas, the crown chakra, the third eye chakra and the throat chakra. Those are all um, communication areas again, which would represent the communication signs for me, therefore air signs. That's our overall energy there. Well, not the overall energy, the energy to which I've come. And now I'm going to get the overall energy. Uh, so in a child, of course, especially with communication being a focus, can be that, you know, your inner child or the masculine inner child or both, like still have something to say. And that could be part of the reason why you need to do reflection as well, like and look back. A child can also be about... Um, you know, going within and, and needing to, to revisit ourselves basically in, um, in aid of how we're going, how we navigate further our present life going toward our future. Sometimes there's some things that we have to, to, um, answer to, to bring closure to, to understand. It also can have to do with having to, um, see people from our childhood, deal with people from our childhood, it could be family members, issues that maybe we haven't thought about or brought up in a long time. It could be happy things also. Um, but again, closure and that sort of thing. In any case, the overall energy is birth. So this is all about a new beginning. This could be connected to your Scorpio moon, right? Um, death and rebirth. I'm going to lay... four cards here um, that will be indicators of what type of relationship with which we may be dealing. Emergence. So this is about having, especially for me, with all this yellow and, and white light and, you know, it's everything very, very positive. Um, you, the yellow is like Uriel, which is um, Uriel, Archangel Uriel. His name means God's light, you know, so this will give you an idea of what that, you know, what the yellow means to me. And then the white is like Christ light. So with that, the darkness must be below. And so she's emerging from that. This is like the rise of the Phoenix. So this could be an ascension of the two of you as individuals, but also of your union. Followed by divine guidance. There's a need to surrender when the moon shows up. Okay, this is feminine energy of surrender. The moon is feminine energy, period, but particularly of surrender for me. And this is indicative of the guidance that's available to us being unlimited and always available as we continue to rise and, and go down our path. Also listening, messages coming in and perhaps between each other. Um, but can be from the universe also. I think that what we're being shown thus far is that the two of you, separate and apart from one another, which is probably why you're in separation, are being worked with and worked on, upgraded, so to speak, um, by the universe. This card, for me, tends to be about um, clear audience, telepathic communication, dreams, even, even though it's listening, it's, it's just a, a, a means of communication with one another and the universe. And this, again, the star represents the sign of Aquarius for me, the air sign coming through yet again. And lastly, miracles and the need to um, believe in them because they do come true. So we didn't see anything very romantic here. I'll check the, the next card since it's upright and see what's up with that one. And then if not, we'll go on and maybe we'll be shown further down um, and, and another spread or something. What's up with the relationship? Well, so thus far, and you see the next one is upside down, so I won't turn that over. But what this means is that there is something blocking. There is something in your life or the masculine's life or both um, of which you need to let go. The, the, the death and rebirth needs to happen with this thing. When I picked up the birth card, underneath it, there is love upright as well. Um, 
but the heaven on earth card means basically if you want heaven on earth to help to create it, that was your first card, creativity, to help to create it, you have to let go of like your past baggage and stuff in order to vacate the space for something new, for the birth of something new, like new love. I think I just knocked down a, a piece of carnelian. So I'm gonna go back to these. And now <laughs> opening to balance, which is all about air and water for me. And again, this, these very precise locations where these um, larger like dots are placed on the masculine, it's over his throat, over his third eye. And then he's got this huge yin and yang symbol on his head. That's the crown chakra, third eye chakra, throat chakra again. And then this woman in blue, there's your water sign, there's you, and there's him. I'm pretty sure he's an air sign, like I've been saying. Miracles and healing sounds again. So you just got listening before, now healing sounds. Um, there's a need for you guys to meditate. And one of the ways that you can do that or a way that is being suggested to you here is um, some sort of audio. Uh, you can listen to whatever kind of music is your favorite, you know, genre and, and you know, whatever you're, it is you're into. I like binaural tones. They are specifically for... Um, healing one's energy basically uh it's a it's a means of meditation and energy healing is to listen to binaural tones miracles and guardian so both of you guys having a guardian angel like we all do here's some fire there may be a fire sign that's involved too and and or impactful upon oh that's you Right, Aries. I forgot for a second. Aries sun. Yeah, there you go. Um, and we're back to this relationship yet again. So I think that what we just was shown in the last spread and as I've been shuffling um, and now coming back to relationship again is that one or, or both of you do have something to work through on your own. Do have some stuff of which to let go on your own. You have to work on the relationship with yourself in order for you to be able to come together. But we're going to continue to look. And we're back to that inner child. I think that means something too. Both times that I cut, I came to inner child. Um, and now your overall energy is meditation. And I just was talking about this already seeing and feeling the need for you guys to meditate, particularly um, with, through the use of some sort of audio um, therapy. But here's, the, um, you know, like basic meditation. You can do this too. Sit down in an Indian style pose if that's what you're into. You don't have to. This would be um, the divine feminine or your, you um, or your higher self with regard to you, the masculine with regard to you, himself, and the union. Overall, the outcome, I started not to put that there. I'm like, I'm like all out of order. Sometimes I do these in a particular order. Um, I just did, didn't just now. What the masculine would have you to contribute toward the union, what he himself is willing to, and what the universe would have the two of you to do. Divine Feminine about herself, it's emergence yet again. So you are rising from the ashes, from perhaps the darkness. Masculine with regard to you, golden memory. So he thinks fondly of you. Um, and, and this is you, right? This is your element, your fire coming through. Masculine recognizing that and having fond memories of it. But um, there are things in his opinion um, of which you have to let go, similar to that heaven on earth card, some baggage that you're carrying, and then some that he has to let go of too, um, but some baggage that you're carrying, that's what golden memories is about, um, taking the golden memories and the positive lessons and all that kind of stuff with us and leaving the negative emotion and negative cords of attachment behind. Masculine about himself, retreat, air and earth coming through here. Here's the Aquarius yet again. 
Um, and here we have sitting in a grassy knoll, um, meditating, spending some time with mother nature. Absolutely air and earth. There's also like a bunch of wisps of like air around this angel here. Um, but this is about what it looks like. Again, communing with mother nature, spending some time with her, connecting. And about the union as a whole, golden path. So I think he does agree. I think this shows that he does agree. And that you, you know, that he is your divine masculine and that you guys are on this journey together. Um, but you're on the path. Like you're not, you haven't reached the destination yet and you may have a ways to go, at least as far as he's concerned. This is from the divine masculine's perspective on uh, his higher self. Um, for me, this card is reminiscent of the yellow brick road in uh, the Wizard of Oz. And at the end of the yellow brick road, we find the Emerald City. And at the end of this golden path, as far as I'm concerned, we find the Emerald Ray and Archangel Raphael. That's when we have, um, you know, gone through all the trials and, and, and tests and lessons, um, karma that we're meant to experience on this path. And, you know, have ultimately gotten the healing that we need. And it's in that, I, I believe that that'll be sort of like ordained by Archangel Raphael and to say, you're, you're good to go now. Um, or maybe even Jesus, right? The uh, healer of all time, the healer of the ages. So they're at the end of the path. We got to reach them. Overall, boom, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm sure you're happy to see this. I am too, actually. Um, although I, I, I've, I didn't feel um, any sort of negativity about the connection, but I'm glad to have it like confirmed here for you. So there we are. Sacred Union overall. There's just this other stuff going on right now. What the masculine would have you do, listen. He may be communicating with you too telepathically and it's possible that you're not picking up on it, um, which would be maybe a reason why you need to work on um, meditation and that will help you to continue to emerge and ascend and, you know, grow in, in gifts, strength, what the masculine himself is willing to do. What did I just say about this? That maybe Jesus was there too at the end. Here he is right underneath it, the universal heart. So that's exactly what's happening. The masculine, um, willing to be healed, allow himself to surrender to that. And what the universe would have the two of you to do, it's all for this purpose, spiritual growth. So we have, that's why we have a ways to go down the path. And the outcome, divine guidance, infinite, here for you forever, but you got to surrender. Now we'll do one from the perspective of the universe. I'm beginning with new love, which is similar to birth, right? The birth of something new and opening to karma with which we appear to be dealing now. Karma and beauty queen. This is kind of like Empress energy for me. Empress in the tarot, feeling very attractive, very confident, very good about yourself. Karma. And the blonde female represents the divine feminine in this deck for me. And with the fiery red hair could absolutely specifically be a fire sign too. Um, but, you know, as is the case with the tarot, right? The queen of fire, queen of wands is the divine feminine of the tarot. Karma. And mature woman. Which may be you. And it may have nothing to do with your age. Mature woman, like Scorpio is a mature sign. Aries is a mature sign. You know, that could be for that reason why it's showing up too. And there's the ice queen I spoke of before when I said one of the reasons why I thought that the masculine before I even started might be an air sign was because she showed up. Here she is again. And she's with fire too. So this could be him, even though it's a female on the card, that doesn't matter. Um, this could be him, the ice queen in this lion or tiger rather, um, could be you, air and fire. 
Wow, boom again. Overall energy is twin flame. So divine couple, recent past, near future, masculine entire self, blocks to the union. What the feminine can do, the masculine can do. Additional advice from the universe and the outcome goes here on this one. Divine couple, <laughs> one big obstacle. It's like there, there is complete, the, your union is completely blocked. What um, is going on recent past? Dating. I don't think this is you. I mean, maybe you, somebody else. I, I don't feel like this is you two together, I should say. But let's see. Let's keep going. Um, near future. Gossip. This could be connected to the listening too, and as far as not listening to what other people think. Um, if you're one big obstacle, maybe that's why mature women showed up. Maybe there is an age situation. There's some sort of um, differences as there tends to be in divine unions that is that somebody's holding on to really, really majorly. Masculine's higher self, short term heartbreak. So he may have been dating, let's say, and had a difficulty, a breakup or something. And this is where his head is at right now. Let me take the next one for his, let's see what his 3D self is doing. Feeling passion. This card is, is about fire signs for me too, right? Passion is like burning passion. All right, we'll go further. Blocks to the union. Young male. I think it's an age thing. Like I was saying, maybe that's why mature woman showed up. An age thing or a maturity thing. Um... Like one of you is maybe very boisterous and one is reserved, that sort of difference. And that's like the third indication of that or third time I was feeling that from when I saw the um, mature woman and then this and then this couple with this and now young male. What the feminine can do here, gifts. So I think this is working on yourself again and ascension and increasing your gifts, allowing them to like, you need that meditation. You need to um, sort of get connected and more conscious and aware about what it is you're doing and where it is you are spiritually and like, you know, through what you're going. What the masculine can do, Ice King, he is guided to get in contact with you. This card very much so represents planet Mars and the sign of Aries and the sign of Scorpio um, to me, as you may have heard. Also, of course, air signs. He is the Ice King and even Leo with this big lion here. But again, fire signs would be represented by that lion too. So he is guided to, and this, it's facing this way, to come toward you maybe to come out of separation. Further advice from the universe, past love. So situations, past love situations, maybe one regarding this short-term heartbreak and then one regarding you guys. Um, both would be past love and outcome. Boom. Okay, this is what matters anyway. We got this and we got this. We started here, we ended here. So what kind of what more than we want? When I picked up the um, twin flame card under here is young female which tends to represent Sagittarius for me, but also fire signs in general, again, with the fiery red hair, the red skirt, all of that. So I will go on to another spread on that very happy note. Sacred union, twin flame, union. True love is here under the, underneath the redhead. Short-term heartbreak actually could be you guys too. Could just be like the whole ball of wax, just all this stuff that he's going through. 
um, and that you're going through, which would explain why we're coming, um, beginning with the three of air. Great sadness. Take time to heal. There's a need to forgive yourself and others. And opening to justice. More air sign energy. This one, um, Libra. Fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right. Stand up for your beliefs. So what you know is right could be apologizing and or, and or accepting an apology. Justice. Up into the two of earth. Too much going on at once. There's a need to make a decision. Consider a more playful approach. Uh, the two of earth for me is deja vu from hell. <laughs> uh, it also has to do with being able to find balance, which justice, again, in the sign of Libra is all about balance, right? The Libra, the scales. So evening things out, making things fair. Equity is about what this is about. And opening to the two of air, which I told you was the first card to which I opened opposite the three. It's back. And we just saw the two of earth to indicate there's a need to make a decision. This one also says there's a need to make a decision. And we're unable or unwilling to make it at, the point, at this point. And we have reached a stalemate possibly. And we're pretending instead that there's no problem. If I ignore it, maybe it'll go away. But that's not doing the right thing. Two of air. And the nine of water. Your wish comes true. Concerns fade away of a love of life. Two of air. I'm going to cut. Oop. And it's awakening, which represents the sign of Pisces and the planet Neptune. For me, it's the hangman in the traditional tarot. Also can be for any other water sign, probably for yourself, Cancer, Scorpio. Look at things from a different perspective. You had a temporary standstill. It's important to be yourself. That um, hangman, it also can be about like an air of suspension, like we're waiting sort of in the wings for an answer, maybe to one of the decision that has to be made, right? That we're waiting on between the two of earth and the two of air. And now um, the overall energy is the three of fire, which is indicative of a party of three, what I like to call a party of three, which doesn't have to be a love triangle, but can be. I'm not going to lie to you. And with fire signs, I mean, this can be showing up this way because you are a fire sign. Um, but of the elements in the tarot, fire or wands is the most phallic and the most likely if we're looking for um, that <laughs> to to be something of that nature and maybe a love triangle because of the wands, right? The wands are phallic. This also means abundance and that things look very good. Have patience at this time and make long-term plans. Masculine, the night of fire, passionate, adventurous, self-assured, and restless. A sudden event that needs immediate attention. Time is of the essence. Think things through carefully. The night of fire, like yourself, is an Aries, Sagittarius, or Leo, where someone taking on those traits or attributes. It's also like the Prince Charming um, of the tarot, for me at least, uh, of all the nights. This is the one, you know, that like comes to save the princess. He's surrounded by the five of earth, fears surrounding money, the wisdom to accept help from others and uncertain self-employment. This, as, as it relates to love, um, for me, can also be about like fear of abandonment. Um, maybe even fear of commitment because you're just worried about lack. You're worried about something being missing. Things were always missing in the past. You always get let down. You're looking forward to being let down again. Um, and so it, it's fear about lack whether it's lack of money, it's lack of abundance, whether it's lack of money, lack of love, whatever. Fear of being shortchanged or your shortcomings. In the masculine subconscious, however, the queen of water, tenderhearted, empathetic, patient and loving is the queen of water. Relationships develop to a new level. 
trust your intuition, care for yourself and others. So we have your energy here and here. The Queen of Water is a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, or somebody taking on those traits or attributes. Um, and as the Queen, the Queens usually correlate to the fixed signs would be Scorpio here. You, crowned by the Ace of Fire, exciting new opportunity, career advancement, change your life now. So you did mention, um, I think in the, the two lines that we spoke <laughs> via email, um, that you were starting a new business or career in the spring. So this could certainly be representative of that and the fact that, it, you know, things are looking good in that area. Go, and that might be also connected to this three of fire, abundance, right? Abundance, things look good. Have patience at this time and make long-term plans. So we're moving out into spring, perhaps, with that card. This is about the new beginning, the birth of something new, something about which we are passionate, and it'll be, um, you know, it will thrive. We can trust this, trust this as a, as a blessing from the universe and change our lives now. Feel comfortable doing that. You are surrounded by the Knight of Water, who is emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and contemplative, falling in love or wedding proposals, the need to balance emotions, and an invitation to a social event. The Knight of Water is a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio as well, like the Queen, um, or somebody taking on those traits or attributes. So this would be like you in your own element, your own energy. And the Chariot, which represents the sign of Cancer. So here's your rising sign with Archangel Metatron, an important achievement. Self-discipline and willpower, public recognition. This is a card of victory. It's also a card of movement where something maybe had been stagnant. So this, they're mirroring one another. This night says, right, something happens. A sudden event that needs immediate attention. There's, there wasn't movement before. Something was stagnant before. Now he's moving. This is in the same way. Um, maybe there had not been movement before, but all of a sudden we're taking off and we're in the driver's seat. So we have this chariot racing this way. We have this knight racing this way so that they can come together. And they do mirror one another here in the spread. Crowning the union, the dreamer with Archangel Metatron, which also represents for me the sign of Gemini. Gemini and um, Virgo, both, rep both ruled by Mercury, which is also what this card represents for me in this deck. It's the fool in the traditional tarot. A leap of faith. Follow your dreams. That leads to unexpected opportunities. At the root, however, it's the devil with Archangel Jophiel. A false sense of entrapment. Being overly focused on material things and negative or fear-based thoughts. So we knew this already, as at least as it related to the masculine, because he's got this five of earth here and it now crosses this devil. So he already has a fear of um, maybe he's married to lack. And it can be actual lack of abundance, material abundance or finances that he's worried about, um, that that's why he can't go forward in a relationship. I don't have enough money or whatever the case is. A lot of them are like that. Yours would not be alone if that was the case. Um, he can also feel stuck in some other sort of circumstance um, or relationship or something. But he, that's that's what it's about. It's feeling stuck, feeling trapped, feeling married to something or someone um, or some place even, or a combination of those. At the heart of the matter, the three of water, a celebration, a wedding, graduation, or a birth announcement, and the need to have more fun. Well, it can mean any of those things, absolutely. Um, the need to be more social, to get out. Um, but it can also represent a party of three, like the overall energy of the three of fire. you know, like a third wheel. Let's see what the romance angels um, may add to the equation. Again, beginning with forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. And opening to codependency, which is very much like the devil or the aid of air for me. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. This is any person, place, or thing upon which um, we have a, you know, a toxic dependency, a codependency, an unhealthy relationship with something also represents, you know, fears, ego, pride, being afraid to move forward, lack of confidence, all of that stuff. And maybe because we hurt someone and now we don't know how to get back to normal. But as we release and heal the past, we can if we, you know, if we do that. Codependency. 
and playfulness to recapture romance allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine but also what's this here attraction you attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully and this attraction card for me is very much about like the law of attraction so what they're saying, like, if you enjoy this moment fully, you're putting out happy and, and joyful energy. That's what you're going to get back. Playfulness. And getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. Playfulness. This could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. This could be the one and new love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. New love. I'm going to cut. Make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. Overall energy is calling in your soulmate, your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. Top the night of fire, free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. So something happens to, you know, make him aware that he needs to do this. He needs to regain control. The top of the five of earth, where there's a lack, is unrequited love. There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. He may have a relationship with an earth sign or again, a poor relationship with money and the material or both. And he needs to free himself from either or both, <laughs> um, whatever the case is here. Top the queen of water. You deserve love. You are lovable. So encouraged to continue to ascend in that way toward love and happiness atop the ace of fire this big red flag is pay attention to the red flags the signs are cautioning you so again the ace of fire the knight of fire telling you to you know push ahead that there's good things to come atop the knight of water codependency addictions are affecting your romantic life you yourself may have some sort of ties to something um that is unhealthy negative cords of emotion um negative cords in general yeah to people places and things that are toxic for you is what i'm getting and that makes sense because i was looking for what your deal was <laughs> when the devil showed up here um you know so it's like connected to the two of you codependency on your end as well atop the chariot a wedding this situation involves marriage here atop the dreamer keep an open mind your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations the soulmate that is here in our overall energy. And I'm gonna, when I went to pick this up, I for some reason picked up several. I can't even, I don't even know where it was now. And I ended up on, um, I ended up on um, finances and career. So I think that this does have to do with money. But now in looking for it, I've picked these up and I'm looking at release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. I think that may be for you. Not that it can't be for him too, but I've just felt it from you. At the root here, a top ego of the devil. Heart to heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. So you guys need to talk um, and hopefully you'll come out of separation, at least to the extent that you can do that to sort of um, or even if had, maybe it has to be telepathically. Maybe that's what, you know, what all the listen was about. That can be too. Um, to sort of get an understanding about through what, you know, each is going. And then we, that'll help us to be more patient. 
and atop the three of water, getting to know each other. So this would have to do with being more social in this case. Um, these cards always have more than one meaning. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. So there, there does need to be a time and will be a time, it seems, where you, um, in the near future, where you guys will come together and be able to uh, discuss some of this. Here at the bottom, we have the you deserve love, right, which is very fire sign to me too. It's um, Sagittarius pretty much, but it can represent other fire signs too. We have this arrow shooting this way, similar to the horses running at each other. The arrow and the being deserving of love, shooting towards the heart to heart conversations and ending ultimately upon a wedding. I'm going to give you also um, cards of abundance because I think I have time for that. A lot of times I'll just do like one or two spreads and I'm, <laughs> I'm already like out of time. And, you know, sometimes it's the total opposite. So I think I have time to do this. I'm excited since you have a business coming up. Beginning with donations, tithing, and charitable work. Give joyfully to the organizations and people who, spirit, who, who spiritually support and inspire you. And know that your generosity will be returned to you many fold in miraculous ways. The time, supplies, money, or other resources you donate will ensure that your positive energy multiplies. So you're encouraged to tithe, donate, be charitable, be philanthropic. Because God is your source, so you can afford to, right? He's going to replenish you. Everything you need is supplied by the infinite source of God, and your faith opens the doorway to receive. In God, there is no lack or limitation. Rather, there is plenty of abundance for all to share. Donations, tithing, charitable work. Do the work. It's not enough to dream or pray. You also have to take the positive action steps that you're gui divinely guided to take. Consistently working on your priorities will make them flourish like a lush flower garden. Yeah, I'm just, I'm feeling that this is money again. <laughs> I'm sorry about being random. I'm, I'm just still feeling like this is, he has a problem with money or he thinks he does. He has boxed himself in, like married himself to money, um, has an unhealthy relationship with money. Um, and that would be why he's not, why it's not flowing to him. Charitable work. And detox your friendships. Your abundance flow is being affected by the people with whom you're spending time. So be discerning about your associations and your relationships. Choose to be with people who are inspiring, generous, and supportive. Donations, I'm going to cut. Let go of guilt. When you allow your light to shine brightly, you inspire others. Forgive yourself for what you think you've done or not done and trust that God loves you unconditionally for those um, for unconditionally for who you are. Learn and grow from past mistakes instead of berating yourself for them. So this learn and grow, we saw already forgiving and learning, which is about that. We saw already the golden memories, which is about that. We saw already the spiritual growth, which is about that. We saw already the um, heaven on earth, which is about that letting go of negativity, letting go of the past, letting go of any hurt that you had, the three of air is about that as well, and then moving forward towards something more positive, right? Guilt would be a negative emotion of which we have to let go. And the overall energy is raise or promotion. Congratulations, an increase in your abundance flow awaits you. This is a result of your positive focus and willingness to take action steps based on your divine guidance. Keep up the good work. Here at top, free yourself and the night of fire. 
Okay, he has to free himself from this unhealthy relationship he has with money um, and, and, um, and free himself from lack. And the way that he's going to be able to do that and build up some sort of nest egg or something is to pay himself first. Make yourself your most important financial obligation by setting aside a portion of your income every time you're paid. This loving form of self-care ensures that you'll have savings to invest in your present and your future. Atop the unrequited love and the five of earth. Okay, those are about lack and negativity. This is about positivity, faith, and optimism, right? Totally the opposite of, unre of unrequited love and of lack and um, uh, fear, right? This is faith. That's, that's the complete opposite of fear and optimism, positivity. You open the doorway to positive experiences and opportunities with your positive expectations and energy. Do not allow negative energy or temporary setbacks to interfere with the path that you're on. Keep the faith and keep going. So he really needs to let go of this energy of lack. It needs to be cut from him. Um, I, I, I hate to try. I, I don't like to sell stuff to people. So I get in a really difficult spot. I get in the crunch because I feel <laughs> that everybody should have energy work. Or, I, mean, I feel everybody should have the divine light cleanse that I provide. Um, and I have clients that feel this way too, which is why I don't do any promotion of it myself. Like the, even the Facebook page that I set up for it, it's, um, it's other people's reviews and testimonies as to what their experience with it was. It's nothing from me. Uh, and I don't invite people to it. You know, I'm not trying to say, here, join my page, join my group to promote in any way. People go to it when they um, are inclined to go to it and, and purchase the service or look into it or to provide testimony or, or a review. Um, that said, I, I, th I think your, div your divine masculine needs one. I'm not going to push, but I'm just saying that. And I... This, if you saw the reading that I did for the collective this week, Sunday the 7th is the feast day where we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, right? The day that he was baptized by his cousin, John, Elizabeth's son. And he was washed. And throughout the love reading and the general too, um, there's an indication of the, fa of the fact that we needed to be washed ourselves. And one of the ways that I feel that um, we do or, or could be washed is through something like that energy work, whether it's by me or anybody else, you do it yourself, whatever. Um, but I really think that the divine masculine in particular, not that you couldn't, because again, I think everybody and their mama should do it. <laughs> but uh, I really think the divine masculine um, in this case could benefit. In any case, here atop the queen of water and you deserve love is cooperation instead of competition. So he may have something, you know, men can get this thing where, I mean, they want to be, they're, 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 if we look at traditional roles, which maybe as a people, right, the collective, the world, we are sort of trying to break out of. But on an individual basis, there are still people who were raised, you know, with some sort of traditional roles and even absent being raised. There's some sort of natural innate, right? Women are naturally nurturers for the most part. Some of us may not be. And if we want to break away from that, then that's cool. But for the most part, women are naturally nurturers. And, you know, men are natural hunters and providers. If they feel some of them that they cannot be, that that's not working, that you're doing better. Um, I don't want to say that it's like jealousy of the feminine, but I, I mean, I guess that could be kind of what it, and that would be a negative emotion too. Um, envy, coveting, that could block his own um, blessings as well. But, you, they, but more than that, they like, they don't feel like they measure up. They don't feel good enough if they can't provide. And so it may feel like a competition, even between the two of you. He needs to know what's yours is yours and no one can take it from you. There's no need to compete and there's an abundance for all. You have complete access to unlimited abundance for yourself and to share with others. With cooperative partnerships, you can accomplish anything. I also said something like this, that um, a lot of times when we're, 
or feeling lack on both sides or either side. When we come together, it is my true belief that when we come together and let go of all of that 3D, you know, mindset and just have faith, I think that that's when you kiss the frog and it turns into a prince. That's when the universe provides, you know, it's in celebration and recognition of the fact that you did trust the messages you were receiving and the guidance that you received when you went ahead and got together. Here's the reward now. I'm going to give you what you need in order to make this be able to work. But we, we, lack, we lack the optimism, I think. Um, now that's not to, again, point you out. I'm saying we. We lack the optimism um, a lot of the time to do that. Here for you, a top pay attention to the red flags and the ace of fire is focus on your priorities. When you put your focus where you put your focus rather is where you receive your outcome. Your priorities are calling you. So this is the same thing as like pay attention to the red flags. It's another one of those like, Hey, look at me. Your priorities are calling you, which may produce a feeling of anxiety unless you give them the time and attention they and you deserve. Even a small amount of time devoted to your priorities will help you to feel better and more confident. So make sure you carve out time for you and maybe to work on your project, work on your business, whatever, whatever you make a schedule. I, I need this time for me to get what I got to get done, right? Prioritize yourself and your you know, new beginning. Here atop codependency and the night of water is abundance mindset. So similar to what I was just talking about with the masculine and actually mirroring his, you may have a little bit of that same issue yourself you got to correct your mindset as well. If you think of your abundance as something that happens in the future, then it will always be one day away from you. See, feel, think, and speak of abundance as something you already have in the present moment. And that is what you will experience. Here at Top Wedding and the Chariot is Bountiful Nature. Spending time in nature helps you to shift to a higher vibration, reminds you of God's infinite abundance. Go outside. So you're getting this message again of the need to connect with nature and to meditate and all of this. Go outside and enjoy a walk or a hike with your pet. You might want to put your headphones on with some sort of audio, right? Meditate beneath a tree, garden, sit under the stars or do something, you know, some other activity to connect with the limited vast, limitless vastness. Crowning, a top keep an open mind and the dreamer, unlimited ideas. Your mind is one with God's infinite mind. That sounds like a dreamer, right? <laughs> Therefore, you have complete access to unlimited ideas guaranteed to divinely guide in action to allow these ideas to come to fruition. A top heart to heart conversations. And ego or the devil detox your friendships. So the devil can be, can represent some of these like toxic situations, toxic friendships, relationships in general that you have. These can still be exes, family members, all that kind of stuff too. Your abundance flow is being affected by the people with whom you're spending time. So be discerning about your associations and your relationships. Choose to be with people who are inspiring, generous, and supportive. I always say our, we should surround ourselves with people of our vibration or higher from which we can learn something and maybe to whom we can teach something even. At the heart of the matter, the top getting to know each other and the three of water, donations, tithing, and charitable work. So this is definitely something on which you are meant to focus, focus upon your priorities, cooperation instead of competition. This is at the heart of it all in between pay yourself first and bountiful nature as well. They told the masculine too, there's enough for you to have for yourself and for you to share with other people. So this is, I think is important for both of you. Give joyfully to the organizations and the people who spiritually support and inspire you and know that your generosity will be returned to you many fold in miraculous ways. The time, supplies, money, and other resources you donate will ensure that your positivity energy multiplies.
Further advice to the masculine, creativity yet again. So he needs to work on ways um, that he can create abundance. And I, I don't want to make it sound like abundance is just money. Um, this is love too. This is helping him to create even the flow of abundance around him. And they've given him some suggestions upon how, what, he, what he can do, how he can do that. Um, he may want to come up with some of his own or incorporate these into his life. How he can bring the flow of abundance towards himself. For you, the gateway. So you're embarking upon a new path. I think you're aware of this. Um, face forward and go for it, basically. Masculine, again, needs freedom. He needs to break away from negative energy, negative cords of emotion, negative cords of attachment. Very, very important for him. It's holding him back. It's restraining him. It's like he's tied down by these cords. You ever seen that book or movie, um, Gulliver's Travels? It was like this, this, they had this guy like roped down um, on like a beachfront. He, he just, he was completely tied down. That's the kind of feeling I'm getting when I look at these cards and, you know, with the masculine here. Um, for you, mature woman is back. Representing of, um, representative of your growth here. Spiritual growth, emotional growth. For the masculine, the king of fire. Encouraged to get into his role. I was talking about gender roles and things before. This is um, not a gender role, but maybe an archetypal role. The king of fire is motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. Focus, 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 and communicate with vision. Be a leader. Take advice from someone creative, you can. King of fire is an Aries like yourself, or a Leo, or a Sagittarius, or sometimes a Scorpio, um, also ruled by Mars like Aries. And the divine masculine of the tarot is the king of fire also and for you it's the star it's like he got your energy and you're getting his because i'm pretty sure he's an air sign like i've been saying the whole time the star represents the sign of aquarius or other air sign libra gemini happy times make positive optimistic long-term plans you're on the right path so you keep getting this message This is also like a yes from the major arcana, similar to the yes you got from the minor arcana earlier for the nine of water. This is one from the major arcana too, if you had like a yes or no question. And for the masculine from the romance angels, this could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. For you, retreat. So more about going to spend some time with nature. It's time to disconnect from the world. And lastly, from the angels of abundance to the masculine, dreams of abundance. As you sleep, God, your angels, and your higher self are giving you divinely guided ideas. They're helping, to, they're helping him to create, giving you divinely guided ideas, answers, and solutions. Be sure to record your dreams in a journal because they contain valuable insights that will help you to manifest your desires into reality. You could do the same. And lastly, words of abundance. You have the ability to instantly manifest abundance by choosing powerfully positive words. Always describe your own and the world's economic situation in loving and optimistic terms. And that is what you will attract for yourself and for others. I hope that you've enjoyed your reading and you find it helpful. Namaste, Angel.